Drop it. Hi, and welcome to this exciting K column training video. Today, we're going to take a look at the back panel of a KC12 to go over the different connections available, as well as its rear user interface. Let's get into it. The KC12 column loudspeaker system features three separately mixable inputs that include two combo XLR quarter inch connectors plus a 1/8 or 3.5 millimeter mini jack connection. The inputs all feature individual AD converters, allowing for separate DSP settings to be recalled between the different inputs. More on that in a minute. The KC12 also features two XLR output connections. Output A is a direct pass-through for input A. Output B is an assignable output that can be set up as a pass-through for channels A, B, or C, or a combined mix output of all three input channels, which can even include the Bluetooth signal. We'll cover the Bluetooth feature in a separate video, so make sure to check that out as well. The USB-C connection is used to perform firmware updates, and it can also provide power to smartphones or tablet devices during a performance if necessary. Keeping in line with the K-Class family of loudspeakers, the KC12 is controlled using a multifunctional digital display with a tactile encoder wheel, back button, and a selection button. Turn the wheel to navigate the menu and scroll through the available options on the screen. Once you land on the desired option, press the Select button to select it. At the top of the menu, we can access the input assignments for channels A and B. Both inputs will default to line level, however, each input has the option to be assigned to mic level. Additionally, channel A can be assigned as a high Z input for applications where an acoustic guitar or bass is connected directly. And input B can be assigned as plus 48 volt phantom power. To change the assignment, scroll to either input A or B and press select to access the assignment options. Scroll and select the new assignment. Once the assignment is made, exit out using the back button. After the input level assignment, we have the input preset options. There are 14 factory installed presets that offer optimized voicings for a variety of applications, including a number of vocal and microphone presets, acoustic guitar, bass, keyboards, and even electronic drum set. Below the input options is the native reverb effect. The reverb can be assigned to either channel A or B. There are three settings available for small, medium, and large reverb spaces. Once selected, the desired amount of reverb level can be easily dialed in. Next in the menu is the subwoofer level control. The subwoofer can be set to balanced, above balanced is boost, and then we have deep mode for performances where deep and commanding bass are essential. You also have options to turn the subwoofer down as much as negative 20 dB or completely disable the sub altogether if necessary. Next, we have our output contours, which act separately from the input presets in order to shape the total sound of the system for specific applications. Contours include live, dance, and cinema, giving you focused performance for each application specific need. Additional DSP features include a global parametric EQ and up to 200 milliseconds of architectural delay. To apply a custom EQ curve, scroll and select the EQ to access the EQ screen. The onboard EQ consists of a high and low shelf with two parametric filters. Simply use the wheel to scroll through the various filter parameters and use the selection button to select them. Once a parameter is selected, use the wheel to adjust the parameter and then press the select button once again to lock in that setting. Repeat the process until the desired EQ settings are complete. For applications that might require room delay, such as setting delay fills and distributed PA systems, this can be applied by selecting the delay option and using the wheel to dial up the required amount, up to 200 milliseconds. The delay time is also displayed in feet and meters, making delay calculations simple and fast. After delay, we have the Bluetooth options, with which devices can be paired with the system for wireless playback, as well as wireless connections between multiple KC12 units. Again, we will cover Bluetooth features in more detail in a separate video. Moving on, we have the output assignment options for output B, where you can select the desired assignment for this output. Output B will default to a post-gain mix-out for inputs A, B, and C. If Bluetooth is running and you wish to include the Bluetooth signal in the mix output, you have that option in the menu. You can also choose to assign this output as a simple pass-through for input B. The KC12 is also capable of accommodating additional subwoofers with the system. If you choose to add external subwoofers to your setup, make sure you use the external sub setting in the output menu. This setting will apply some critical time delay to output B to properly align the driver of the KC12's native subwoofer with the external sub, keeping the entire system in phase. 
Within the Outputs menu, we also have the ability to adjust the gain for the outputs from Unity up to plus 25 dB and down to negative 100 dB. Our last option is the Settings section, where we have options for saving and recalling custom user scenes, changing the LED function for the front and rear LEDs, and enabling security and setting a password to protect the DSP and gain settings from unwanted changes during an event. To set up security, choose Full or Partial Security. Full security will lock out the navigation screen as well as the gain controls, while partial security will lock out the navigation controls, leaving the gain unlocked. Once you've selected the security level, you will set a four number digital passcode which will be used to unlock the system once security is activated. Set the passcode by selecting the field for each digit of the passcode. Scroll to the desired number for that field and press select to set it. Move on to the remaining fields to complete the passcode. Once set, Scroll and select the lock option to activate the security mode and lock out the controls. When setting up security, just remember to write down or record your passcode somewhere. You don't want to accidentally lock yourself out of the system due to a forgotten password. In the settings section, you'll also find the sub only option, which sets up the subwoofer to be used by itself without the top box component. And here in the utility section, you have options to perform a factory reset and run a test tone through the system for diagnostic purposes. And that brings us to the end of the rear user interface of the KC12 column loudspeaker system. Hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.